I'm Holly Taylor, and I am so excited for the conversations that we're having today on this day of National Day of Truth and Reconciliation. And so he is a VP of Inclusion and Belonging. I'm so excited to be able to chat with Jason Seawright today. Jason, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Holly. Thanks for this opportunity. No, thank you for taking time just to help us understand the importance of this day because it is so much more than just an orange shirt. And I know a lot of kids will go to school wearing their orange shirts and people will be wearing orange shirts. But I want to know, what does National Day for Truth and Reconciliation mean to you? <clears throat> well, being Indigenous, it's, uh, it's very important to me. I remember growing up through through my whole K-12 to uh, education system and not hearing anything about Indigenous people. Yet, these are our original lands in in Canada, mm-hmm. uh, not hearing anything about our our history, about treaties, um, about the Indian Act, about residential schools. You know, th- there's so much information and it's such a rich culture and, and rich history. Yet, uh, we didn't, Canada did not do, well, probably globally, uh, <clears throat> we didn't do a very good job of educating people. And... Uh, <clears throat> I see that's changing now. Like, I think some of our, our children and maybe even grandchildren uh, probably know more than, than we did growing yeah. up. Yeah, I remember thinking, oh, residential schools were good. They got free education. And then you dive into the atrocities that happened, and it is heartbreaking. You think of the generational traumas that emerged because of it. Um, yeah. It's definitely a dark part of Canadian history, and I'm glad that we're taking steps. But I just, I feel like we're not really doing enough fast enough. Maybe that's just my own instant society. I want it fixed now. So what are some of the ways that as Canadians we can observe National Day of Truth and Reconciliation? I think is uh, to create our own understanding. You know, there's, there's now movies out there that that are very uh, that are actually told from the indigenous world view uh there, there's websites out there like national center for truth and reconciliation they've got some great resources uh, there's a lot of books out there that, that individuals can can uh, look into um, one of the thing is and it's it's good to connect with indigenous people and ask them but there also needs to be some onus on other people's learning, right? Like if I want to learn about how to balance a budget, um, I'm probably looking into that and looking at resources and asking for, you know, there's advisors or things out there or whatever type of information. Um, why can, why can that same thing not be done for indigenous history, indigenous education? You know, like, um, I think we would really make an impact if, if non-Indigenous people took the ownership and onus to learn about Indigenous culture and Indigenous history, which is why I think this day is, is, is very important and it's a significant day to create that awareness. What are some meaningful things and meaningful ways as Canadians that we can do to help move the needle forward? You talked about doing the homework, but just... There's the education portion, but I'm also a little bit more of an activist at heart. So what are some of those practical things that we can do? Maybe lobbying the government, like what can we do to help indigenous communities get the things that they need as well? I think is one of the most important things is having relationships with indigenous peoples in your area, right? Like, Six Nations might not have the same needs as Poundmaker First Nation in Saskatchewan yeah. or Ermanskin Cree Nation in, in Alberta. So getting to know them and don't just don't take that paternalistic attitude that or view that I'm going to do things because I think this is going to help. Right? If I want to know what's best for Holly, I should go and ask Holly. I shouldn't assume that I already know. You know, so establishing those connections um, and go out to some of the events like we like in in this area, 
we had uh, we had two powwows that, that that are very close to us out at uh, Six Nations and Mississaugas of the Credit during the summer. You know, go around there, experience that culture, put yourself in there. Um, don't expect that that culture and history is going to come to you. We need to do. We need to do uh, just like anything in life. We we need to do our take responsibility and do our own actions. Yeah, I love that you said Ermiskin because that's the area that I grew up in. <laughs> so I'm oh. from Edmonton. So I'm like, I know that name. And uh, just being exposed to those different cultures was, uh, it's really incredible because our country is so diverse. It is so rich in our history, not just in our present. So let me open up the floor to you. What is something that you would like to share that you want people who are going through the education process to know? Well, you mentioned earlier about what type of actions. If, if you look at some of the, uh, what do you call them? There's, there's, there's different groups out there, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that can be su supported, like National Center for Truth and Reconciliation. Um, what about contributing to uh, scholarships or bursaries for Indigenous students? Yeah. Uh, what about promoting uh, friendship, in Indigenous Friendship Center in your, in your area, you know, those, those types of things. I think, <clears throat> I think that one of the biggest things we, we can do is, is uh, open up our hearts and open up our minds and just have a better understanding of each other that um, we may not all look the same and, and have the same viewpoints, but I think we have a lot more in common than we don't. Right. I always tell people here that, uh, everybody wants to be cared for. Everybody wants to be treated with respect and everybody wants love in their life to be loved, to give love. You know, um, you talk to a lot of people throughout the world, they'll, they'll say the same thing. Indigenous people aren't any different. Yeah. And, and, but yet, um, we've created a narrative. And, and when I say we, it's it's our education systems, it's our um, politics. You know, Canada is the only country t to have an Indian Act that regulates Indigenous peoples and their power. You don't see an Italian Act, a Ukrainian Act, a German Act, mm -hmm. but there was one created in in, in Canada. You know, to ultimately what I think and many Indigenous people think was to create genocide. Yeah. Um, and I don't throw that word around uh, easily, but I think if people started reading more and, you know, look at some of the websites and uh, there, there's two good shows that, that I've seen lately. Uh, one was The Killer of the Flower Moon. I think that's what it was called by Martin Scorsese. It was like three and a half hours long. Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a great movie. And you being from, from Alberta, mm -hmm. to me that story was very similar to what Muscochis is, like the four bands there where where they had a lot of revenue from, from oil. Yeah. And how um, the challenges that, that came with that, mm -hmm. right? And, and then I think about some of the other, I can't think of them the main one that I was, uh, it's something horse. I saw it quite a while ago, but it specifically talks about a young hockey player being taken away. Uh, yes. And it's actually, uh, the boy is actually from Northern Ontario and then comes to play hockey in Toronto and, and then, you know, uh, talks about his, his experience. Well, not talks, but the movies about his experience and, residential school and the impact that it had when he left school being an adult and and um, family member so there's some good things out there and and there's lots of books like i said but i think it's just uh, uh like i said earlier opening up our hearts and opening up our minds and and, and finding some of those you know educating ourselves is sometimes if we look at what's happening globally, 
Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, and some of it isn't nice. But, you know, read up on that. And, and the other thing I think we need to be aware of is also to, to check our own bias. You know, I've, I've had conversations with, with people at work here, and they've been open, and they said, you know, Jason, we didn't. I was brought up in a family where this was a this was a truth, and I wasn't going to question my dad or my mom. And then I later found out it's not the truth. There was it was a it was a bias. It was a stereotype that they were believing. And yeah. you know, so and I always I always admire those individuals because they've gone out and found their own truth. Um, and I think that's what we need to do going forward too. Yeah. Um, and just one other thing too, like we talk about truth and reconciliation and what does that mean? And I think too often uh, we want to jump right from, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. But do you know why you're apologizing? Do you know what? It's kind of like being in a relationship, right? And I get mad at my partner or, or, or vice versa. And then we'll just automatically jump to, oh, I'm sorry. And then this. Well, do you know what you're sorry for? <laughs> do you know what that is? Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Okay, you do. So you know, um, that's why the truth part of truth and reconciliation is so important. We need to understand that. And how do you really? How do you really apologize um, for something you're not really truly knowledgeable about? Mm-hmm. So. And once you do, I think that apology means a lot more and that reconciliation comes a little bit easier. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I have one more question just because it it came to me and I am generally interested in just if people have said, because I've, I'm clearly not white and people will say to me, well, I didn't have, I didn't own slaves. And I'm like, that's not really the point. Um, So when someone comes to you and says, well, I didn't make that treaty. I didn't do that. Why do I have to be a part of this process? What is, what is, what was your, what's your answer to that kind of question? We're not doing this to make people feel guilty. We're, and, and we know that people today, you know, probably 90% of us did not have a direct impact in what was happening 80 years ago, 90, or even like, I think the last residential school closed in 92 in Saskatchewan. So it's not even, it's, it's not long. Yeah. You know? Um, so it, it's not done to make people feel guilty or not done to make them feel bad. But if that's their first response, then they're probably dealing with something too. And, you know, maybe they need to do that, that, that search and find out what that is. Why are they so defensive? What are, um, but you know, Holly, there's a saying out there that I often share when I do presentations at the, at the Polytechnic here is, um, if I know better, I can do better. I don't have no more excuses. I don't have no more reasons as to why I can't. But if I know better, we should all be doing better. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, I like just to remind people that, sure, it was maybe past generations, but we're still dealing with the traumas. And so if we can help support people dealing with the trauma based on what our ancestors were a part of, directly, indirectly, we can just all live in a more holistic and whole community. There's unity yeah. in community for a reason. <laughs> yes. Good one. Great point. And the, I guess what's frustrating too is you get some people out there that, that saying, well, that history didn't happen or I don't believe it. That's, that's not the truth. Oh, alleged, alleged unmarked graves, you know, or you know, there, there's different, Things like that, uh, you know, even when we when we talk about slavery or other racialized peoples, uh, we often want to disprove that truth part of the history. Yeah. 
and say, oh, no, that didn't happen. That wasn't us. Why would the government want to do something like that? Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of reasons why. Yeah. And a lot of it usually comes down to, to money and, and power. Yep. Follow the money. That's the other thing. Uh, last question. Are we moving in the right direction, in your opinion? Do you feel this positive change is starting to happen? I feel that I feel there's changes, positive changes happening. Uh, like you, I sometimes question if, if, if they're happening quick enough. Um, but I look at my own, like I shared with you, you know, so um, what I, I graduated in 86 and never heard anything about Indigenous education, D- didn't have any resources in the, the schools, an Indigenous advisor, an Indigenous counselor. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we now see where, where we have um, Indigenous counselor, Indigenous advisors, Indigenous uh, graduation coaches, uh, Black graduation coaches, thing, things like that. And, and we're, we're now pushing for more of the underrepresented and racialized groups, people, history to be in the curriculum, you know, and, and we're doing it at the post-secondary level. We're, we're doing it at the K to 12 level. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of changes in that. Look at the, look at September 30th. That wasn't happening five years ago. Nope. You know, um, the, the whole idea that, and it makes me so proud when when I walk around Toronto or, or Saskatoon, where, where I'm originally from, when I see all these orange shirts. And it makes me even prouder when it's not just Indigenous people that are wearing them. You know, there's other uh, races and cultures out there that are w- wearing them. And to me, that, that tells me they're becoming more knowledgeable. They're, they're educating themselves. Um and once again, we wouldn't see. And it's it's amazed me. So the, the, the first year when that Orange Shirt Day came out, I remember maybe just a handful of people. Now it's like hundreds, maybe even thousands of people that, yeah. that I'll see wearing them. Mm-hmm. So we are making a difference. Um, but like anything, it's it's going to take some. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some allies and some champions as well. Yeah. You know, it, it can't just be driven by, by Indigenous peoples. We all need to do this. We're all in this together. Oh, yes. So. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jason, thank you so, so much for taking time today just to communicate with us just the importance of uh, Orange Shirt Day and how it goes beyond just the orange shirt and a continued commitment to saying, yeah, I'm wearing the orange shirt, but I'm I'm doing the work too, and we're gonna we're gonna get through this. Yes, thank you for uh, allowing me this opportunity to to uh, talk about about this important day and uh, what we need to do. Mm-hmm.